Astronomers think FRBs are created from dying stars. About eight years ago, astronomers discovered an energy signature they called a fast radio burst, or FRB. The blast of radio waves lasted five milliseconds, releasing more energy than the sun puts out in a month. Distance to the source was said to be almost 3 billion light years and was surmised to come from the death of a black hole. Another source for FRB energy is thought to be from cosmic batteries. If a black hole orbits a neutron star, its immense gravity is thought to create the power that sends those strange bursts into space. Cosmologists recently advanced a theory that black holes can evaporate with surprising violence. If a black hole contains M solar masses, it will glow at, at 6 times 10 to the power of 8 M Kelvin. That means a black hole can eventually explode like a hydrogen bomb. It is those explosions that are supposed to generate radio emission. Recently, astronomers working with a combination of radio regarding optical telescopes announced that FRB 121102, the first repeating fast radio burst, exploded into space with the force of many supernovae. As the press release states, however, astronomers now have a new Puzzle. The source of the broadcast is from a surprisingly small galaxy. Since the galaxy is puny, it is thought that the black hole physics must be involved with FRB formation. Black holes radiating away their masses does not conform to electric universe theory. Radio waves and range of energy curves are properties of lightning bolts. Computer simulations demonstrate that plasma phenomena are scalable over several orders of magnitude, so they behave in the same way whether in atoms or galaxies. Perhaps FRBs are really flashes of cosmic lightning erupting from electrified clouds of plasma on an immense scale. If correct, FRBs are most likely nearby, so they are less energetic. Plasma is the correct way to interpret their behavior, but it is exploding double layers that impel them. Rather than relying on mathematical phantoms like black holes in tandem with overweight neutron stars, why not create real testable hypotheses? and work them up with real physical models. Plasma experiments in the laboratory correspond to plasma formations in space. Because of the scalability factor, under similar conditions, plasma discharges produce the same formations independent of size, whether in the laboratory or on a planetary, stellar, or galactic level. Since duration is proportional to size, an electric spark that lasts for microseconds in the laboratory might last for years at the stellar scale or millions of years at the galactic scale. Stephen Smith. And we have another one, power in perspective. What astronomers call a fast radio burst can release more energy in 5 milliseconds than the sun does in 80 years. Assumed distances to such high energy sources is said to be a billion light years or more. Because of redshift measurements, if that is the case, then the power concentrated in those flashes of energy is equivalent to billions of hydrogen bombs. What could generate those forces? At the outset, it is important to consider that in an electric universe, radio waves and a range of energy curves are properties of lightning bolts. Computer simulations demonstrate that plasma phenomena are scalable over several orders of magnitude. They behave in the same way and illustrate basic premise whether in atoms or galaxies. Recently, physicists working with the Australian Square Kilometer Array Pathfinder announced the discovery of so many FRB sources that they effectively doubled the catalog listings. According to Dr. Jean-Pierre McCourt, from the Center for Radio Astronomy Research. Bursts travel for billions of years, passing through intergalactic material along the way. Each time this happens, the different wavelengths that make up the burst are slowed by different amounts. Timing the arrival of the different wavelengths tells us 
how much material the burst has traveled through on its journey. Assumptions about distance and the density of matter in the universe are built on previous assumptions about the size of the universe and its age. Light waves traveling for billions of years through uncounted clouds of gas and dust, its size is based on Big Bang Theory and black holes factor. And when FRB energies are discussed by the mainstream, collisions among black holes or the explosion of black holes are held forth as explanations for the laboratory experiments confirm that plasma formations in space can be modeled in the laboratory due to their scalability. Under similar conditions, plasma discharges produce the same formations independent of size. Since duration is proportional to size, an electric spark that lasts microseconds in a laboratory might last for years in the stellar scale or millions of years in the galactic scale, where they might suddenly erupt and then dim again. Electric universe cosmologists postulate that FRBs are actually occurring in nearby galactic neighborhoods so they are not unimaginably powerful and not coming from the edge of the universe as previously written plasma discharges in the form of exploding double layers can accelerate particles in ways that are unfamiliar to consensus astrophysicists consensus <laughs> that's interesting plasma physicist and nobel laureate dr hans elfane thought that exploding double layers should be considered a new class of celestial object. Electricity is responsible for stellar and galactic behaviors, and when the current density gets too high, double layers in those circuits catastrophically release their excess energy, appearing as FRBs, X-rays, or flares of ultraviolet light. Al Fain wrote, A study of how a number of the most used textbooks in astrophysics treat important concepts like double layers, critical velocity, pinch effects, and circuits is made. It is found that students using these textbooks remain essentially ignorant of even the existence of these, in spite of the fact that some of them have been well known for half a century, e.g., Double Layers, Langmuir, 1929 Pinch Effect, Bennett, 1934. If correct, FRBs are actually nearby, so are less energetic. Plasma is the correct way to interpret their behavior, but it is exploding double layers that impel them. Rather than relying on mathematical phantoms like black holes, why not create real testable hypotheses and work them up with real physical models? Perhaps FRBs are really flashes of cosmic lightning erupting from electrified clouds of plasma in an immense scale. Stephen Smith. Well, it's almost, he... he goes more into depth here, but they're pretty much the same. But uh, interesting. I mean, you know, when you have to hypothesize gigantic black holes and neutron stars, you have to also hypothesize huge H-bombs blowing up millions of light years away. Astronomers admit we were wrong. 100 billion habitable Earth-like planets in our galaxy alone. Estimate by astronomers, indicate that there could be more than 100 billion Earth-like worlds in the Milky Way that could be home to life. Think that's a big number? According to astronomers, there are roughly 500 billion galaxies in the known universe, which means there are around 50 sextillion, 5 times 10 to the 22nd, habitable planets. That's, of course, if there's just one universe. And in fact, just inside our Milky Way galaxy, experts believe, experts, it's funny. I believe are some 400 billion stars, but this number may seem small, as some astrophysicists believe that stars in our galaxy could figure the trillion. This means that the Milky Way alone could be home to more than 100 billion planets. However, since astronomers aren't able to see our galaxy from the outside, 
they can't really know for sure the number of planets in the Milky Way is home to. They can only provide estimates. That's the case in everything, and I don't mean to pound on them, but it's true. Everything is an assumption or an estimate. That's the thing about mainstream that nobody seems to understand. There are some calculations which suggest that the Milky Way is home to average between 800 billion and 3.2 trillion planets, but there are some experts who believe the number could be as high as 8 trillion. Furthermore, if we look at what NASA has to say, we'll find out how the space agency believes there are at least 1,500 planets located within 50 light years from Earth. These conclusions are based on observations taken over a period of six years by the Planet Probing Lensing Anomalies Network. Collaboration founded in 1995. The study concluded that there are way more Earth-sized planets than Jupiter-sized world. It's full of stars and planets and so much space, so little information. In 2013, Dr. Phil Yock from the Department of Physics at the University of Auckland said how Kepler finds Earth-sized planets that are quite close to their host stars, and astronomers estimate that there are around 17 billion such planets in the Milky Way. These worlds are hotter than our planet, although some could be of comparable temperature and could therefore be habitable if they are orbiting a cool star called a red dwarf. Our proposal is to measure the number of Earth-massed planets orbiting stars at distances typically twice the Sun-Earth distance. Our planets will, therefore, be cooler than the Earth. By interpolating between the Kepler and MOA results, we should obtain a good estimate of number of Earth-like habitable planets in the Milky Way. We predict the number to be in the order of 100 billion. Interestingly, some astronomers say that around 11 billion planets may be orbiting sun-like stars, while others believe this number is more like 100 billion. In 2017, NASA made great progress in the search for alien planets. Their most noteworthy discovery was the solar system TRAPPIST-1. We've talked about this in the previous show. Home to seven Earth-like planets who may be home to alien life. I know uh, it was remote viewed that it does indeed. That three of the worlds do inhabit the planets. And um, I know that uh, the new James Webb Space Telescope was uh, launched and their first missions are called Super Secret. And the first star that they are apparently looking at is Trappist-1. Why it's super secret, I have no idea. 